Hey brothers and sisters, welcome back to another Base LDS video. This is your boy BC. And this is a video that I wish I did not have to make. Uh, the nation is reeling from the news of yet another school shooting. Three children. Three employees of the school I think I think it was a substitute teacher administer the head the principal I guess and a uh, janitor killed and I'm not going to talk directly about the person who committed this atrocious act They messaged their friends. I shouldn't say they. She. Let's get the gender right. Messaged her friends. Letting them know what she was about to go do. The school was locked. She shot through the doors. Entered the school. took out whoever she could as quickly as possible before gaining a position where she could fire on police from a second story window. There's your story of the shooting. I'm not gonna discuss whether it's right or not to have guns. That's an individual choice. That is for discussion. I used to live in Colorado, a place where people used to have guns firearms I live in South Dakota where people do have firearms I'm not going to say whether or not I own a firearm that's for the bad guy to guess about I'm operating a small business teaching self-defense just been a couple classes here and there, but I'm going to open more widely uh, this spring. So I have thoughts on self-defense. Not going to talk about that here. But I do want to talk about the media. And the absolute sad state of our media giving people correct information. And choosing instead to push narratives. Now I don't care if you're right, left, or center, you're doing it. That's when I say media, I mean the mainstream, right? Your CNN, your MSNBC, your Fox. I do believe in the Second Amendment. I do believe it's the right of an individual, if it's their choice, to own a firearm. I do believe firearms should be owned responsibly and legally. I do find it sad that when someone commits an act, a certain percentage of the population comes out and says, remove all guns, thereby punishing the lawful gun owners, the high and vast majority. So I expected those things to come out in regard to this shooting. You just, you listen to it, you, you, you decide whether they're saying something new. If there's some twist, there's nothing new. What's new is the shooter was a female. <laughs> and then beyond that, the shooter was a female who wished to be called a male. So there you go. I guess in some cases, in how you look at this, a white male carried out a school shooting. You get a faction of the left-wing Twitterati that will start their Twitter message with, while nobody should lose their life, dot, 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 maybe you shouldn't have made fun of a transgender person. 
Maybe we shouldn't be de dead naming the shooter. Maybe we should be getting their gender identity right. Maybe we should. And the media is twisting themselves in knots, trying to put together a message that suits that particular brand of folks. This person, this shooter, left behind a map of the school that she had previously attended. And the reason why they were going on their shooting rampage, I have not seen the manifesto. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to read it. I probably will. But in the messages made to friends, it was clear it was because she was upset about the school's refusal to adhere to any form of trans ideology. And recent laws passed in Tennessee regarding what might be called transgender rights. I disagree with that statement. In the same way I agree, disagree with gay marriage rights. It's a terminology thing. It's a phraseology thing. I don't like it. And the fact that trans people are facing genocide. And that's what I want to talk about today. Because it's that ideological basis that's the root of this violence that we're seeing. And there's been limited violence that has not been brought up so far. They're very big on talking about the transgender people that have been killed. Was it 22, 23 last year? Six so far this year? They're big on talking about the genocide they're facing. And as soon as the media decides how to address Audrey, excuse me, as soon as the media decides how to address this person, and it's already starting to spin, you will see that it's really Republicans' fault. Heck, George Takai, Star, Star Trek fame, Captain uh, <clears throat> Sulu, sent out the tweet. Let's face it. This is all Republicans doing. <laughs> New York Times. Well, really, if you think about it, it's Tennessee's fault for passing these transgen anti-transgender bills aimed at the children. We must do things for the children. There's no way this person goes on and does what they do unless they're suffering. Nobody sane carries out an act like this. And if they are sane, they're evil. So there you go. There's my take. This person was either insane or evil. Sometimes it can be both. Not, not throwing out which one here. But one does not exclude the other, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. But I want to talk about what the media is not telling you. And what you're going to see from the left, if you're on Twitter, if you get into any of the left-wing news organizations... I want to share a post from the Trans Resistance Network, T-R-A-N. And I'm going to talk about them more here in a minute. Here is their response to the school shooting. And uh, forgive me, I hope you're on a TV screen, not a phone. You might read this better. That's why my glasses are on. 
media statement on the March 27, 2023 school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee for immediate release from the Trans Resistance Network, T-R-A-N. See their logo up there? There's a trans flag. One version of the trans... That's the trans flag. It's not the whole pride flag, but that's the trans flag. And the pink unicorn pegasus. The Trans Resistance Network has been notified the shooter involved in today's church school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee was a person identifying as transgender, known from online profiles as... I'm not going to say their name. While it is not our policy to engage publicly with news media, we believe this moment calls for a thoughtful response from our collective. Interesting word, collective. That is a leftist term. Marxist. We point out that today's incident in Nashville, Tennessee is not one tragedy, but two. They're already splitting hairs. The first tragedy today is the loss of life of three children and adults. We extend our deepest sympathies and heartfelt prayers to those families dealing with the loss of loved ones. There is nothing we can offer that will comfort the hurt or ease the sorrow. We mourn with you. I thank them for that paragraph. I do. I hope they're honest and genuine when they post that paragraph. Now here comes the matting part. The second and more complex tragedy is that, name of person, who felt he had no other effective way to be seen rather than to lash out by taking the life of others and by consequence, himself. It's a she. We do not claim to know the individual or have access to their inner thoughts and feelings. We do know that the life for transgender people is very difficult and made more difficult in the preceding months by a virtual avalanche of anti-trans legislation and public call-outs by right-wing personalities and political figures for nothing less than the genocidal eradication of trans people from society. Many transgender people deal with anxiety, depression, thoughts of suicide, and PTSD from the near-constant drumbeat of anti-trans hate, lack of acceptance from family members, and certain religious institutions, denial of our existence, and calls for detransition and forced conversion. All of these factors contribute to a population that is medically underserved and who often lack anti-trans and who often face anti-trans bias while accessing care leading to significant physical and mental health disparities hate has consequences hate has consequences all of these factors contribute to a population that is <clears throat> excuse me it is a testament to the inner strength and beauty of transgender people that despite the overwhelming odds of homelessness, job discrimination, and constant anti-trans bigotry and violence, so many of us continue to persevere, survive, and even thrive. We will not be eradicated or erased. We remind the news media to respect the self-identified pronouns of transgender individuals who come across your desk blank person, self-identified with he, him pronouns on forward-facing sites, social media, their Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever uh, this person was on. She identified as a he, him. We also urge you to avoid pandering to those individuals on the right who will use this double tragedy to torment, to for, to excuse me, to, f to foment fear and terror, transgender people, to torment, that makes no sense, to torment, terror and terror transgender people in order to advance a political agenda or transgender elimination. Based and sensational sensationalized coverage of these viewpoints is both irresponsible and reprehensible. Requests for interviews will be referred back to this statement. So in other words, this is all we're going to say on this. And this is from their Twitter. Um, 
Andy No reported this. I hope some of you know Andy No. I hope many of you know Andy No. Two tragedies. One paragraph on the loss of six people and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six paragraphs on how hard it is to be transgender. This begs the question, who has it easy? Who has an easy life? Some of us might be a little bit more well-off materialistically. I struggle to make it month to month. I struggle to make my wife happy, to give my daughter the things she needs to succeed, the things that she needs to be socially accepted in her, in this area. I struggle also to teach her to be self-reliant and to learn to take it when the hard things come down on her. Like where friends give her a hard time, just because friends, friends are weird at this age, right? When you're a kid. And forgive me, I don't buy it for a minute when they talk about the barrage of hate faced by trans, let's just call it, 2S LGBTQIA plus. 2S for two-spirit animal, if you haven't caught that recently. Because they have the backing of government, corporation, and media. We're constantly told how horrible we are if we don't accept these people for what they are. There's a viral TikTok of a young lady crying because she dresses as a boy and identifies as he, him. And yet, for some reason, she cannot figure out. People always call her she, her, girl, woman. And to show you how man she is, she's wearing a wife beater t-shirt, you know, the tank tops with the... She drops down to show you where her mastectomy scars are at, so that her boobs have been removed. We're just supposed to read their minds. Everything about this person is female, except the way they dress and their haircut. But the way she talks, the way she walks, her size, female. You've got women bowing down before men who pretend to be female. Just watch the Drew Barrymore show. She takes a knee in front of Dylan Mulvaney and says, it must be so hard to be you. Dylan Mulvaney wins sponsorship from Tampax. <laughs> Why didn't a woman get that? And go look at Dylan Mulvaney's Instagram and Snapchat history. This boy has been putting on a front from the start. Heck, there's a video of Dylan on The Price is Right. Oh, wait to see how he reacts. And it's a he at the time. No misgender. No dead name. No, 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 none of that. But the right wing barrage. And what do they mean by right wing barrage? Because the news media, New York, New York Times, Washington Post, USA Today, this is all about this would not have happened if not for Tennessee legislation stopping youth from being able to transition, medically transition, and to partake in puberty blockers, hormones, and other things that affect their growth. And then they say that this was all sponsored by The Daily Wire. Ben Shapiro, Michael Knowles, and Matt Walsh. Walsh. They always leave out Andrew Clavin. I can never figure out why. I prefer Andrew. 
for their bigoted views that helped to spur on these bigoted legislations. So the media is already pushing a narrative, but they need a little bit of time to nuance it because it's complex here. This was a woman identifying as a man, and we want to make sure we can make this everyone's fault but that person's. It was really society's fault. But look at this Trans Resistance Network. Who's the Trans Resistance Network? Shall we take a look and figure it out? This is their symbol. This is their homepage. We're movement builders. Our sole purpose for existing is trans liberation. See, it comes down to oppression. In order to achieve this aim, we, we take control of our narrative. Advocate for policies that protect the rights of trans, non-binary, gender non-confirming people. Facilitate and mutual support and educate ourselves in fostering healthy, sustainable communities. We fight all isms of the world that are designed to restrict the rights of marginalized groups. We transcend all boundaries. We are Trans Radical Activist Network. This is a homepage. They'll tell you all over the place. We do not support violence. This is for educational purposes. This is for... Okay. Resources. Trans Day of Vengeance, donations, open letter to the city of Palmdale. Trans Day of Vengeance? This is something you might not have heard about through your programs. Unless you watch Tucker Carlson, I think he covered it a week ago, give or take. I don't watch a lot of Tucker, but I, I remember catching a snippet of this one. Trans Day of Vengeance, what is that? What does Trans Day of Vengeance mean to you? What do you think of when you hear a Trans Day of Vengeance? Here's their description of a Trans Day of Vengeance. The trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming intersex communities are facing astronomical amounts of hate from the world. Are they? At least a hundred gender-affirming care ban bills have been proposed. Utah, SB 16, has been passed, and West Virginia's HB 2007 is heading to the Senate. Our community is frightened. Some have been experiencing mental health crises due to the political climate in our country. On 1-31-2023, Donald Trump announced he will punish health care providers and promised that this madness will end. If you needed a reason to vote for Trump... So far in 2023, six lives have been lost. 2022, we lost over 60 people. Okay, I was off on my number. But it's their number. Where are they getting that from? Our community has a stigma attached and significantly impacts marginalized communities at a higher intensity. There are members of our own communities that turn against the true meaning of pride. Now with that, the, the members of their own communities that turn against the true meaning of pride, that's a group called Gays against groomers. Those are gays, lesbians, and bi's that do not want sexual orientation ideology taught in schools and presented to children. That's it. They're not gays that are calling for the destruction of gays. They're not lesbians pushing for the lobotomization of lesbians. They're not buys saying, choose a side. They're just saying, teach kids math, reading, writing, history, social studies, and real science. Stay away from the ideologies, the critical theories. Here's this one. Like the stone riot, Stonewall riots the gays and lesbians were experiencing, what the trans community is facing now. This cycle of hate needs to end. In fact, it must. Allies, siblings, we need you now more than ever. And here's a quote. I was a radical revolutionist. I still am a revolutionist. I am glad I was in the Stonewall riot. I remember when someone threw a Molotov cocktail. 
I thought, my God, the revolution is here. The revolution is finally here. So the revolution wasn't there until someone threw a Molotov. Until an act of violence was committed. Tran will be hosting an event at D.C. Time and location on April 1st at 11 a.m. in front of SCOTUS. The online event will be held on 4-1. Time to be announced. That's for online. If anyone is interested in organizing in their state, please fill out the contact form. If anyone is new to organizing, TRAN will be providing an organizing guide to assist. Please be sure to express this on the contact form. Trans Day of Vengeance. <clears throat> Resources. Tran legislation map. Welcome to our Tran resource page. Tran is currently developing other maps. It's not really complete yet. Here is our legislative map. On this map are active bills. We will provide a weekly update with any changes. Now you go through this and you think you're supposed to click on this, you're not. But this tells you the kind of categories they have. Military, education, gender affirming care, education, prison, drug, or excuse me, drag, sports, prison, work, free speech, inclusivity bans. Then you come down and there is, whoops, this map. Well, okay. But you see there, there's this map here. And you can click on No, oh, come on. All right, I guess it won't let me do it in this mode. But you, oh, here you go. There it is. Now it's now it's showing it to me. You click down here and you can click the type of bills they're presenting. And there is, come on, I hate this screen. There is all of the different, so if there's a, Bill against drag show performances in your state. It'll show up on that map and you can click on this for drag show. Prison, work, religious free. Let me see here, South Dakota. Thank you, South Dakota. This is where I'm at. This is religion. This resolution is essentially what the state of South Dakota accepts, accepts. They believe that the strength of the nation was based on Judeo-Christian values, protections for religious freedom, a.k.a. liberation for religion, collaborating with more faith-based community, organizing communities, organizations to help communities. And then they give you the pictures of the people who sponsored it. A little bit about it. I don't know if you see that. It keeps blowing up my screen. But you can go and you can click on the South the, the, the Utah HB bill, which it tells you who sponsored it, who co-sponsored it, and what's it about. And there's a lengthy amount of, in, amount of information there. But they are not fans of stopping children from being physically mutilated by transgender surgeries. There are mental and physical problems as a result of these surgeries. And I'm not in Utah, but I'm assuming St. George News. When I Googled it, this was the first one, so I clicked it. I'm like, okay, most popular. Congratulations, St. George News. So they talk about the bill being signed, what it's supposed to be. Um, uh, some perspective on it. Um, protecting children who might later regret having transitioned from one sex to another. Yes, because these things are irreversible. 
If you've been told that these are reversible, it is a lie. You can't under, undo a mastectomy. You can't undo... Let's just call it the building of a pole or digging of a hole. You can't undo that. You can't remove you can't undo the removal of sex organs. However, newly elected representative Sahara Hayes, D. Mill Creek, took issue with the bill calling it exclusionary. I don't think it is ever fair to position one group of children above another in terms of their well-being. This bill centers on a very small percentage of cisgender children who might come to regret their decision. However, it does not acknowledge the lived experience. Right there, this person's a fool. No, vote them out. Lived experience. That is happening with transgender children now. I think we focus on the transgender part and not the fact that they're kids, Hayes added. These are our nieces and nephews. These are the kids next door. This is your best friend's teenager. Waiting until after puberty, Hayes says, makes gender transitioning much harder. It is really hard to lose the height you gain or vice versa, she said. It's hard to grow hips or make them disappear when you want that. And then she cites one person she knows who transitioned in their 30s. And boy, was it hard. But then she went on to defend it. (laughs) Wow, she's picking a side, isn't she? Trans kids are kids. Then here's your ACLU of Utah. Guys, the ACLU, the Southern Poverty Law Center, the ACLU... Stop thinking for they're for rights anymore. Stop thinking they're for normies, common people. They're for ideologies now. They've been conscripted. They've been enlisted. ACLU posted for, for Governor Cox to veto. Tweeting the following. Trans kids are kids. They deserve to grow up without constant political tax on their lives and health care. We will defend that right. We see you. We support you. And then here's a list of some others that are going through in Utah. Because this is a Utah-based measure. But you go back. This map. uh, This map explains... It can show you where there's trans, where there are bills being proposed, so you can actively protest them. I'm okay with protesting bills you don't like. But let's come back to Trans Day of Vengeance. I was a radical revolutionist. I still am a revolutionist. I am glad I was in the Stonewall riot. I remember when someone threw a Molotov cocktail, and I thought. My God, the revolution is here. The revolution is finally here. These people live for this. I'm a conservative. I spent a good part of my life thinking, we're the most well-armed. We're the most trained. Conservatives, like myself, former military. Been there, done that. I was in the Navy, so I mean, I'm, a, I'm a bit of the... Uh, My done that is not so much done that as, say, the Marines and the Army or other factions within the Navy. But conservatives are being pushed out of police and military spaces because our views are dangerous and un-American. And... We're all NRA, and we all go shooting every weekend, and we all this and we all that. And we laugh because of the videos of these Antifa fools who look like fools. Quite frankly, I mean, on the surface, they're nothing to be afraid of, right? So this transgender, trans day of vengeance... 
They're there to protest. Why call it vengeance? Why not day of awareness? Why not day of representation? Why not day of why vengeance? And then use a quote about a, from a revolutionary talking about how great it was to throw the Molotov. Left-wing gun clubs. Now, we all laugh at the leftists, right? The vegan soy boy babies. <laughs> I could probably take three of them right now. I'm an old fat man. I'm in my 50s. I'm not in my prime. I could still take three or four of these little punks. Let's remember Karl Marx and the, the media advocates for the abolition of firearms. The left wants the right without firearms. And see, that's what this really comes down to, is the right, conservatives, independents, are largely the firearms owner in this country. Karl Marx said that no one, that the revolutionaries should be armed. So you get the Socialist Rifle Association. You get... If others have rifles, we'll have rifles. Why U.S. leftists from The Guardian. The Puget Sound Gun Club. The John Brown Gun Club. What is the Liberal Gun Club? Salon. What gun groups aren't just for white right-wingers? Redneck Revolt. John Brown Gun Club. Queer Gun Club. The only one they mentioned that wasn't for white right-wingers, there was a... There is a right-wing group. It's called Black Guns Matter. <laughs> it's a libertarian, Maj Touré. And it's like, hey, man, everyone should own a gun. We should all be free to own a gun. They're not a fan of Maj because he shows up on the conservative and the end of, in the libertarian circles. And he's, just, he's, he's, he's responsible enough to know that blacks were the most oppressed when they couldn't own a firearm and that laws were passed after slavery to take firearms away from black folks so they couldn't protect their farms and their lives. Six gun groups that aren't for Redneck Revolt, Pink Pistol, National African American Gun Association, the Liberal Gun Club. Um, I had originally clicked on a few of these so you could see what they did and what they're about. But they're actively about being ready to be armed against a right-wing enemy that just doesn't exist. It doesn't. Brothers and sisters, this is where I'm going to end this video. Look. This isn't the time for politics, but we need to be aware of the ideologies that are pushing politics. The media will reframe this. It's already out there that this shooter had gone to this school and it was because of the abuse suffered at Christian ideologies and doctrines and that she was forced to put up with in this school that really caused the hurt to her so that she would lash out these years later. And they're more worried about... Here's my last thing. They want to push red flag laws. I don't like them because who gets to decide? You're going to say a judge. Well, we all know judges out there that we should, should not be judging things. There's a judge on the Supreme Court that can't judge whether a person's a woman or not without the aid of a biologist. And she's a woman. Allegedly. I mean, if she doesn't know one, then maybe she's wrong. But brothers and sisters... This is what Moroni warned us about. 
we're being torn into groups and subgroups. All manner of heights. And then we're pushed into taking up arms against one another. And I'm sorry, I don't know who is eradicating and genociding trans folk. I haven't seen a trans gas chamber. I haven't seen a trans firing squad. I have seen people say, not the kids. Let them decide when they're adults. Why does that frustrate the left so much? Why is that such a problem? Why separate bathrooms for men and women? Why separate sports for men, women, boys, girls? Why not just let them cross over and compete? Because there's inherent problems and difficulties and pains. You can't ignore biology. I know when it came to, to the Chinese sniffle, it was follow the science, we must listen to the science. But in this case, the scientists are politically captured. They're ideologically stunted. They're fools. The ones who push these ideologies. Oh, you can participate in any sports. It's Everything's the safe. No, you're a liar. The majority of good science is out there, but the media's ignoring it. The media's ignoring the potential violence of the left. Hey, look, I know there's right-wing violence, but those are individuals. Those people never say, I'm doing this for the cause of, I'm doing this for, they're going out because they're mad about a thing. That individual is mad about a thing. These people are pushing ideologies and they're getting violent about that. It's wrong. So brothers and sisters, that's it. That's my piece on this video. Maybe we'll get back into this when there's more made about the manifesto, but my heart's broken. And the media is lying to you. Be aware of what's out there. Thank you for watching.